Hey there and good morning. It's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy and I am an independent Stampin' Up! Denver um, demonstrator here in Denver, Colorado. And today I want to show you how I made this cute little treat box. Now it slides open and I did put some chocolate kisses in there. But um, I think this would be a really cute, simple, quick gift that you could give to, um, you know, friends, family, coworkers, Postal Mail, Brista, Starbucks, I don't know. So let's just go ahead and get started and I'll show you how I made this. We're going to use the Itty Bitty Christmas Stamp Set and we're going to use the Pinewood Punch. Pinewood Pine something punch. And now if you're interested, the punch does come with the stamp set. Looks like this. And you can find it in the annual catalog. But we're only going to use the punch today. Another thing we're going to use is um, the Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper. Now, if you watch my videos, you've seen me use this several times. I love this Designer Series paper. And I'm kind of sad because it's in the holiday catalog. Not the holiday catalog, sorry, the mini catalog that goes through December. And pretty soon, we won't be able to get it anymore. So if you don't have any plaid paper, be sure and stock up now. But if you take one of these sheets of the plaid paper. I found a rhinestone stuck, stuck to my finger. I don't have any idea where it came from. Anyway, sorry. It happens in my craft room. But you take your craft, your plaid paper and you're going to cut it. We need three by three inch square. And I can't pick them up. Here we go. Of the plaid paper. We need one of those. But, so you can get four out of a sheet of designer series paper that's six by six. If it's 12 by 12 paper, you could get a lot more. And really, you could do a bunch of different things or different colors and designer series papers and blah but we need to score it looks like i didn't score my paper i'm going to bring in my simply scored tool here and i have a strip this is nine inches by three and a fourth and i'm going to score it and since it's heavy cardstock i'm going to use the smaller knob on my stylus but i'm going to score this at three and a fourth four and a fourth seven and a half and eight and a half okay that's going to be like our band and then this is the bottom of the box this is a five and an eighth five and an eighth inch square and i'm going to score at one inch on all four sides okay so now I think we have all of our scoring ready. In fact, this is going to be a really fast, simple project, like I said before. So I'm going to take my designer series paper. Now on our scoring, there's a very thin, well, there's a score line up here and it makes a little thin here. We're going to work on the other end. So this end, this square here that's scored, right? I hope you can see it. I can see it pretty good in the camera, but is three and a fourth by three and a fourth. And I'm going to just take a little bit of um, seal and put my designer series paper. Now, I'm not going to put seal in the center because we're going to punch that out anyway of the center of my designer series paper. I only put it on the edge. And then I'm going to center it right here. There we go. On the below that first score line right here. So here's my score line, and now I have my designer series paper centered right there. Then I'm gonna take my punch, and we're gonna put the punch in all the way, centering it so it's equal sides on, or equal on both sides as best we can. And then I'm gonna just punch that out, and it's not gonna be easy because it's going through, whoop, goes flying, two sheets of paper, but it ends up looking like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and decorate the front of my box before I go on because to me it's easier to work on a flat surface. Now if you wanted to get fancy, you could put a piece of window sheet on the back of this now. But since we have, or I'm going to put this little banner, the candy doesn't fall out of the box. So I'm not going to worry about the window sheet and then this way they can just see right through that little opening when I give them my gift. Okay, so first on this little scrap of paper here, this is about a half inch. When you cut the insides of your cards, this is what's left over. I'm going to put that into my 
Banner Pick a Punch. Now this is another thing that's in the um, mini catalog that's only good until the end of December and how we ever lived without the Banner Punch or the Pick a Banner Punch, I'll never know because I absolutely love this guy. And I've got my um, little strip of paper. I've already cut my banner on one side and I'm saving this little piece. And I'm sure you've seen me do it before, but I wanna measure how long I want my banner and I'm gonna use that as a template. I have a little seasons greeting, like I said, from the itty bitty Christmas and some cherry cobbler ink. I'm gonna try to stamp it straight without my head in the camera, but I'm gonna hold it. Now, since it's such a fine little font like that, I'm gonna hold it firm, but I'm gonna be really gentle so I don't squish the rubber. There, and look at, there we go. And I held it, let that ink sink in just a minute and you get a really nice image. Okay, that's all the stamping, believe it or not, that we're going to do. And then, to get the other side of my banner, and I want this side a little bit longer, so I'm gonna put it, see how I put that little piece down? Well, now you can't see because it's white on white. I put this down back where I want it, and now I know um, where I want my banner to trim, so I'm gonna trim that this way. I don't know if that made any sense, but it's like a template so you know how long you want your banner. Then when you put it back in here, now the banner's gonna be the exact length that you want. Okay, I'm gonna clean up a little bit here. And then I'm gonna go ahead with some glue dots. Just on the ends because we're gonna lay it over the hole or the tree punch that we punched out. And take this and I'm gonna just lay it right over my little tree there. I did my glue dot, <laughs> did not come off my paper. There it is, or it didn't come off the roll. Let me try the glue dot again. There we go. Now, before we go on, I'm gonna use this um, gold string stuff that came, this is from the Forever Greenery ribbon bundle. And I love this green stuff. This is in the annual catalog. And I'm going to use these little jingle bells. Now these are in the um, hmm, in the mini catalog and they're carryover last year so you only get these a little while longer. And I'm actually going to use my needle threader. Have you ever used a needle threader? It looks like this and I'm going to put it through my bell and then put that string all the way there we go this string, because this string really ravels, is one of the things that I love about it, but it makes trying to get it through that bell difficult. So we put it through there, and then pull it through, and then pull the bell off. And now I have my little bell on my banner. And then with just a simple double knot here, maybe if my fingers start working right this morning, goes this way. There I had to get my my act together here. And I'm going to just tie this kind of snug. I'm not going to pull it too taut because I want my jingle bell to kind of dangle there. See how that, that string really ravels? Unravels. There, and then just tie that right there. I'm going to trim these edges. There we go. And then I want my knot, of course, is on the wrong side. I'm gonna pull it to this side. And, oh my gosh, it untied. Nice, Kathy. There we go, tie it again. Okay, now I got it tighter this time. Let's pull it down one more time here. And then I'm even gonna take those little ends and unravel them, and look how cute that is. There we go. And then there's my little bell with my raveled strings and the whole. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish our box. Now we're going to just hit those score lines with my bone folder. And I'm going to make sure the edge of my paper lines up so when I put my box together, it's straight. 
coffee and then bring in the bottom or the base of the box. Fold on all those score lines. Okay, and then on our box, we're gonna cut up to that score line on both sides. And on this side too. Nope, I thought I missed that one, this one too. So then I'm gonna show you a little trick and I hope you can see it because you're kind of far, but when you fold this up, if your paper's on the wrong side, on this side of the score line, see how I folded this side up? If your paper's too long and goes on this side of the score line, then I suggest you just cut a little bit off because you want it to sit, your box to lay straight. And this way, now when it's not too far of your score line, when you put your box together, it's not gonna hang off the edge. It's not gonna make it to make a nice crisp edge and it won't have a funny edge there. So I'm gonna check all mine and make sure. Same with the inside. You want it to be on the inside of those score lines for the inside of your box. This one's a little wide, so I'm gonna just trim him off a little bit. And then let's check the other side. Oh, this one I've already trimmed off. These are both on the inside, and this one needs just a little trim. Okay, so we still have our all of our edges, our box. We're ready to put it together. Everything lines up so it's smooth here at the top when you put your box together because of to check how those score lines or how the paper's in between the score lines. And then with just a little bit of liquid glue, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this tab. Hmm. <laughs> Good morning, a little bit of glue on this tab. There we go. I think it's cold in here, really. I think that's part of the problem of the glue is still cold, but maybe that's crazy, I don't know. And a little bit on this tab and then just lay those, making sure my corners are nice and crisp. Okay, and then a little bit on these two tabs. A little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here, maybe a little more on the edges, okay. And then lay that in there. And then make those nice and crisp, make sure your box looks I think the box looks pretty good. Oh no, we need that again. Then we're gonna take our box and lay it in here. Make, just to double check and make sure everything looks good, which it tends to fit in there really nice. So a little bit of glue on this half inch strip of paper. And I'm gonna open it all the way and fold that and lay this down. Looks like that. There we go. Then we just put a little bit of candy. Whoa! Or a lot of candy. In our box here. And then just slide that together. Look how cute that is, right? So then they can just slide. They can see the candy through the hole. And then they just slide their candy in there. And then, last but not least, I'm going to take... I have some of the, um, let's see, this is a new package, the Holiday Rhinestones, and these are the perfect colors. This are Cherry Cobbler and Shaded Spruce, which is the two colors I used on my box, and now I'm going to just kind of sprinkle a little bit of um, bling on there, whoops, in the two colors that I used, and I think I'm going to put five on there, maybe three, you gotta go odd numbers. Can't get my fine here. Well, let me try this one here. There we go. Should have used my take a pick tool in the first place. Maybe one there, one more. Let's do one more green one. No, I want a red one, whoops. One more red one right here by this green one. There we go. 
So there's my little box. So if you're interested in making some little boxes, Stampin' Up! Get, or says that they should get their orders to us if we order by December 9th, you could go to my online store, kathyhouse.stampinup.net. If you have any questions, be sure and reach out. I will answer all the questions I can. And um, come back here Friday. I'm going to have a couple little calendar projects for you, and I'll show you how to use your Simply Scored in a whole new way. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.